Hi everyone, here I wanted to look at two short interview clips of Elon Musk to see what we can learn about the character. Can all get a bit confusing these days, what's true and what not, and so on. So Elon Musk is a business magnet, investor and inventor, and second wealthiest person in the world. He is said to be founder of various companies, also it seems taking companies over is more accurate and relabeling them. In fact, he has the US government supporting him to give government projects a visionary looking frontman to sell their activities to the public for increased acceptance. For instance, SpaceX and Tesla received billions in government funds. So they are basically government contractors. And SpaceX is closely linked with NASA. SpaceX is 85% funded by the government and the rest are private investors, including from Saudi Arabia. Note, he only has bachelor degrees in physics and economics. And also he was accepted at Stanford University for a PhD program in material sciences. He dropped out at the start. He also appears a bit controversial because he has confusing positions on things like AI, the vaccine, restrictions of free speech and so on. So on one hand, he's supporting and developing these ideas, but also criticizing them. So he managed to appear in the public with a positive persona, despite his technocratic intentions of linking man and AI. That positive persona is, in my opinion, his main achievement or his main purpose. Let's have a closer look. Okay, the first one is from about eight years ago. It's about the beginning of SpaceX. People who've been in the rocketry business for decades. So here we see his teary eyes from the beginning. Yeah, that's an important observation. Yeah. Who say about you that you don't know what you don't know. Well, I, I suppose that's true of anyone. How can anyone know what they don't know? <laughs> but, when, uh, okay, so here we see Elon Musk in his usual mannerism. So he has his smart ass little comments. We see him laughing and we see the jerky shoulder movements, the jumping shoulders, and that's a bit his baseline. In the media, these things are attributed to his Asperger syndrome, which is now described as autism spectrum disorder, ASD. So from teary eyes, we see him launch into laughter. <laughs> but when um, critics say you can't do this, your answer to them is... Here again, teary eyes. We've done it. He's done it in partnership with NASA, which has given SpaceX technical advice and a contract worth up to $1.6 billion, mostly for 12 cargo flights to the space station. But SpaceX's... So how likely is this that a company with little experience gets billions of pounds to do complicated space flights? Think about it lack of experience bothers some NASA legends like Apollo astronauts Neil Armstrong and Gene Cernan. They've testified to Congress that the Obama administration's drive to commercialize space could compromise safety and eventually cost the taxpayers. Now is the time to overrule this administration's pledge. A little bit back and forth, yeah? That's how it works. To mediocrity. You know, there are American heroes who don't like this idea. Neil uh, Armstrong. So he was laughing, he was smiling, and he has satiric eyes at the same time. So that's really strange. It doesn't seem authentic then. Gene Cernan have both testified against commercial space flight in the way that you're developing it. And I wonder what you think of that. I was very sad to see that uh, because those guys are, yeah. So we see a bit of quivering around the mouth and the teary eye and the broken voice. So now he's supposed to be sad and teary. Again, pressing the teeth together, breathing in heavily. He's suppressing his uh, urge apparently to cry. You know, th those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. You know, I, I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing here. And, and I think that would change their mind. They inspired you to do this, didn't they? Yes. And to see them casting... So here we see him fighting the urge to cry. ...stones in your direction. So, yeah, here he can't even speak anymore. Difficult. 
did you expect them to cheer you on? So they're hoping they would. It's difficult. So here we see the mouse corners go down, a sign of sadness, yeah? So the thing is, no grown man or woman in front of the camera would easily cry, especially if you're talking about a scientifically oriented, rational person. The simple reason is that when we are in front of a camera, we are all in our head. We have all kinds of things in our head. We want to say what we have to get organized, wonder how we appear on camera. So we are all up here. So we are completely disconnected at that moment with our emotions. So for that reason, it's nearly impossible to cry in front of a camera in an interview. What are you trying to prove to them? What I'm trying to do is, is to make a, a significant difference. So here we see the eyes slanting down on the corners. So we see here sadness. So they're hoping they would. What are you trying to prove to them? What I'm trying to do is... So he's unable to speak a few seconds before. He's fighting the urge to cry. And now he's immediately speaking in response and giving an answer. So they're hoping they would. What are you trying to prove to them? What I'm trying to do is... So immediately with order pause, he can launch into his little sales pitch here. Even so before he had long pauses and couldn't speak. Is, is to make a, a significant difference in in space flight and 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 help and, and 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 poor guy yeah that's the impression he's giving at this moment stuttering helpless you know let's listen to this again trying to do is is to make a, a significant difference in in space flight and yeah. and and help make space flight accessible to to almost anyone and i yeah. I, I would uh, hope for as much support in that direction as we He's giving the impression that his motives are pure and for the public goods that almost anyone can go on a space flight. I don't think that's correct. <laughs> but that's his sales pitch, yeah? And there's a roller coaster of emotions from teary eyes and sadness to laughter to back to sadness. And that makes it not appearing authentic and believable. Okay, let's go to a newer one. It's not every day you get invited by one of the world's richest and most influential people to a sit-down interview. So here there's a narrative spun at the very beginning. It looks very much like reality TV, except that I suspect this has little to do with reality. We see a young tech guy, how we would imagine a young tech guy looks like. We see the red chairs. It appears a bit like we expect royalty. It reminds us of the red carpet. Earlier on Tuesday, I'd received a response to an email from Mr. Musk. Let so very spontaneous, last minute. Let's do an interview tonight, it read. And here he comes. It feels a bit like being in a zoo. There's exotic animal coming out of the shadows, blurry still. It feels a bit like voyeurism. Just a few short hours later, we were setting up in Twitter's headquarters. All the stereotypes are fulfilled. He's in a t-shirt with an assistant in a short skirt, looking at their phones. Quarters in San Francisco. Hello, nice how are you too. doing? Really nice to meet you too. We're about to go live, very surprisingly. We only just found this out. <laughs> oh God. Here we see the BBC reporter James Clayton with a handheld camera, which was pioneered by the film The Blair Witch Project, and that everything is very improvised and unusual. Uh, uh, on. Uh, on Twitter, but that is Elon Musk. Uh, we <laughs> He's turning around like he expects to be attacked from behind. So here we are reminded again of the Blair Witch Project. We didn't know about that, but you never know with Elon Musk. When he sat down, he was in the mood to chat. So how do you think it's gone? Well, I, it's not been boring. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not boring. And we see the quirkiness of Elon Musk erratic laughter and his shoulder jerks. But the main thing here is a hand gesture. So the behavior panel was also already all over this interview. And they called it the steepling position, which is a sign of superiority and being in control. The behavior panel puts out the narrative to interpret this yeah, very quickly. But the fact is that people like Angela Merkel, Donald Trump, Macron, use the hand gesture on TV. It really reminds me of hand symbols attributed to secret societies like the Freemasons and the Illuminati. It symbolizes the square and the compass or the 
seeing eye, the eye of God. And it shows you a little bit who's holding the strings here. To me, he is much more than what he pretends to be. And he is just a little BBC errand boy, crouching with his little phone, everything last minute, jumping when Elon Musk wants him to do an interview. It's been quite a roller coaster. The, the pain level of Twitter has been extremely high. Um, this hasn't been some sort of party. So we can also see on Elon Musk's t-shirt, it looks very much like a technocratic version of Da Vinci's iconic Vitruvian Man. So that's a man in two superpositions. We see the arm twice. That's a superposition. And it also reminds one of the initial Iron Man suit from the Afghan cave. Um, so uh, it's been really quite a stressful situation. Were there many mistakes made along the way? Of course. When you put that initial bid in, you then had a wobble. You kind of said, I actually don't want to buy Twitter anymore. Then you changed your mind again and decided to buy it. Did well, you do that? Did you do that? I kind of had to. You, right. Did you do that because you thought that a court would make you do that? Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is the reason. <laughs> right. So you were still trying to get out of it and then you just were advised by lawyers, look, I ha you're going to have we're to, gonna, we're, to buy this. Yes. So that story makes no sense. It's a bullshit story. So that a court makes you buy it. No one would get into the situation in the first place, make an overpriced offer and then having to purchase it for tens of billions of dollars, surrounded by an army of lawyers. What an absolute bullshit story. We have been sold here. Interesting. So you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's not clear at all how to read him here. He doesn't say very much. He's observing. Then he's all of a sudden breaking out into laughter and his shoulder jerks again. It's not clear what's funny at this moment. It's, I find it very hard to follow. I suspect it's supposed to show how unusual everything, how quirky he is, what a tech genius he is, despite him having only a bachelor in physics. It feels like they had two completely disconnected conversations and they added it together. We're, we're, we're gonna, we're, to buy this. yes. Interesting. So you. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? How bizarre. It seems impossible to interpret what's going on. Is it a joke? Is it reality? Is it fake? Is it played? How to tell? Yeah. So you, so you didn't, you didn't actually want to purchase it, even when you said you were going. You, well, not at that price. Almost immediately, um, you sacked a lot of Twitter workers, um, yeah. and, and, and I, I spoke to them. It was very easy to speak to them uh, when it happened, and, and, and the way they said, pretty much everyone said, is, is that it felt quite haphazard, it was. and it felt a little bit uncaring. Do you, do you, do you, uh, I wouldn't do you... say uncaring. The, 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 you know, the issue is like uh, the, the company's either going to go bankrupt uh, or if, if we do not cut costs immediately. Um, this is not a, a caring, uncaring situation. It's like if the whole ship sinks, then nobody's got a job. So I suspect all this is intended, the story with the layoffs is intended to explain what is going on in many other tech companies, you know, Amazon, Facebook, laying off thousands of people. So I guess this is a way to, to make it go down more easily with the public. I know the BBC, for example, is not thrilled about being labeled uh, state-affiliated media. Not, not exactly. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't going to get to that later, but let's go for it now. It's officially objected to that term. Do you want yeah. to respond to it? So here we see both of them on their phone. It's all quirky, modern, spontaneous. That's the impression we get, we are supposed to get. I mean, our goal is simply to uh, have, um, do, you know, uh, to be as... Uh, truthful and accurate as possible so uh, okay so we make here a mental note he wants to be truthful and accurate okay you've said that you were going to um stand down as I already have. chief executive right okay i, I, have you, I keep have telling you, you I'm, have... I'm not the ceo of twitter my dog is the ceo of twitter okay okay so much about accuracy so on wikipedia he's still listed as the ceo of twitter or at least until someone else is appointed after almost an hour of questions, he hung around to answer more questions on Twitter. It was an unconventional end to an extraordinary evening. <laughs> it really was an extraordinary interview. It was surreal, it was bizarre, it was enlightening. At oh my God. Okay, now back on the street, back in the daylight. This spooky session is over. Dracula is dead. Spring is coming. Times it was 90 minutes long and something I won't uh, ever forget. Doesn't he worry he's run over by a car or a cable car at least? To me, it was despicable, this interview, from all kinds of angles. 
it wasn't even a reality TV show. It was probably just fake in all respects. So in summary, that interview can be interpreted in whatever way you want. So there was a bit I didn't show, which was discussed a lot. The bit where Elon Musk was apparently destroying BBC with respect to hate speech and misinformation. And that was posted on Telegram millions of times. But BBC still published that interview and that bit. So it makes you wonder why. Some said Elon Musk was hard pressured on various issues like the Twitter layoffs. So an interview which can be interpreted by anyone for any reason. And that makes it also kind of useless. To me, the interview and the characters are all scripted, starting with the Elon Musk character. The real Iron Man is a fabricated persona, including the last minute spontaneous interview, including James Clayton going to California, like he's visiting this exotic animal in the zoo or visiting Jurassic Park, something like that. Wikipedia says Musk served as an inspiration for the character of Tony Stark in the Marvel film Iron Man. To me, both are fictional characters. So without the movie character, Mask would utterly appear unbelievable. Only because the movie is so fake, he has a little bit of an appearance as being real. Think 20 or 30 years back, back then it would have seemed impossible to us, to the public, that someone like that would be running multiple companies at the same time. Tesla, OpenAI, SpaceX, Neuralink, the boring company and now Twitter and so on and so on. It would not have been believable. But what has really changed? The day is still 24 hours and he still has to eat and sleep. I would imagine even Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, they are also just characters implemented. Facebook and Twitter. So these are effectively just government agencies. Some also speculate that he just bought Twitter to build a social media app like WeChat in China. So everything app X. So please put down in the comments if you think this has anything to do with the reality, these interviews, these characters, or if you think we are just being sold a bunch of lies. So I hope you liked my little analysis and thank you for watching and I talk to you next time. Bye.